uh, first guest tonight. My first guest tonight, you all know from his probably best known for his exploits in outer space, but he's got a new series on the air, which he plays a policeman called T.J. Hooker, which, as they say, is seen on another network, one of those other networks on Saturday nights. You could probably check it out and find out where it is. And he's going to be making a guest appearance on NBC November 7th, a new edition of TV's Centered Bloopers. Would you welcome, please, William Shatner. Good to see you. Good to see you, John. Yeah, I know you're, uh, you're shooting your series right now. In Wouldn't fact, you like I... to have you had such a great run? Because most, most people on television, if you get a series that stays on a couple of years, you're a hit. And then Star Trek would have went how long? Well, it really only went three. It's been uh, rebroadcast so many times, it seems like it's yeah. been on forever. Of course, your series has been on for... <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like forever. And then you turn around, I, you know, I got caught coming back from New York the other day. I'd never seen Star Trek, the movie, uh, with, with Ricardo. Yeah. You do amazing stuff. When you do this, when you do those scenes, are you aware of all the other stuff? that's going on or does that come in, in later? special effects? Yeah, because well, that's they, difficult for actors sometimes to react to a scene that is not really there. What they usually do is uh, they have a storyboard right. and the director is sufficiently familiar with what it's going to potentially look like, right. describes it to the actors and sometimes even has it drawn right. so that the unknown enemy is uh, at least uh, conceived. Uh, so you know somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere somewhat. Yeah. Somebody told me you emceed uh, a show at the Improv, the Improvisation? Yeah, I just I just uh, did it this past weekend. It's, For people uh, who don't know what the Improv is, it is one of the places out here where a lot of young comedians work. The other's a comedy store. There's several of them. Yeah. In fact, that's why I, I did it. Uh, uh, comedy talent is so rare, right. as you only too well know, and you foster it on this show, and they do it on that show. Right. And I wanted to see what was happening, and uh, did an open monologue which uh, you did a monologue well your stuff you're out in front of the audience right. and you, you have a you're pretty certain of what's going to you're going to get a good reaction I people don't expect me to be funny I guess and um, and so the guy had submitted some material and I said no that doesn't seem like uh, it would be right and he said well what about this uh, they say that when you read the phone book uh, a good actor can make it interesting and a great comic can make it funny so he gave me a list of names and you just read I just read it of course I had to add a few things like a nose and glasses and whistle and a siren gun. Props. A few props to make it, but it, it worked. But when you started it, when one started, there was, right. you know, he didn't know that the material was going to work. Somebody it. once said a good actor, and I don't know who tells this story, and I guess I read it in the paper the other day, that when Richard Burton was in a play, he would say to somebody that I'm going to do this scene in the play, which was the same every night. And he said, during this scene, I'm going to make the audience cry tonight. And tomorrow, playing the same scene, I will make them laugh. Mm -hmm. And he would take the same dialogue within the play, and I guess because of his ability as, as an actor, would make him cry in one scene. But doing the same dialogue the next night yeah. would, make them, uh, would make them laugh. I suppose it sounds good. I don't know how that fits into the context of the play. Though. Yeah, I don't either. You know, I mean, especially... if you're supposed to cry and you laugh, I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, <laughs> right. on a death scene. For the when following you scene. You know? <laughs> How's your new series going? It's going well? It's going really well. It's, uh, the, numbers are, the, num the, the magic numbers are climbing higher. Right. We're taking our time slot and we're really getting in the, right. it's really going well uh, I'm very proud of the show uh, yeah. we have a we have a show coming up for example that um, it's called a cry for help um, which is based on a, an idea that I came in with having wor worked with a group called the junior justice connection project which, deal, which deals with juvenile crime right. and this show is all based on a real-life event that took place. It espouses a, a citizens getting concerned with juveniles because right. that's the only thing that will help us now that funds are being cut back. And the Juvenile Justice Connection Project is is uh, going to uh, premiere it. It's a big event, and it's on television. It's on a, what is commonly a series, which is right. really just every day, you know. Uh, but here is something, a special event, a real life thing, and, and, and a good thing. It's a positive element of television as against all the violence yeah. and, and harm that we see so much. Uh, you do some of your own, or a lot of your own stunts, which many of the studios or networks do not like their stars to do, well, to get I, involved. I and do. yet I know the stars like to do that, well, but you want to make it realistic. And, and exciting. There's, yeah. a, there's an element of excitement that somebody uh, else doing it doesn't have, you know? I mean, if they, if you, I've seen you jump off of heights and uh, we have and, done strange things in, on this show and and that adds an air of excitement will johnny emerge or not yeah the audience likes to see will he kill himself yes. tonight <laughs> yeah. and, and imagine the headlines if johnny does kill himself <laughs> Phil. What a way johnny to kills though. himself on show. you're not there to uh, <laughs> to uh, laugh at it well what that's the, what the studio what was the stunt that with the 
the plane, the small plane coming down the runway? They and somebody said you were supposed to hang on to like the wing strut or something. They were, there was a, a hooker, mad hooker, right. runs after an airplane with the bad guy in it. Right. Airplane turns around, and chases mad hooker. Hooker dodges out of the way and grabs a hold of the spar and right. hangs on for dear life. Plane takes off. Hooker draws his gun and says to the bad guy, "Land this plane." Or no, they didn't want you to do that. Did they? No, they they said, "Don't do that." Well, now that makes perfectly good sense. Well, up to a point, I thought. I mean, it if you get hurt, they could close down the series. That's true, and I didn't certainly want to go up into the air. What I did want to do was be chased by the airplane. Sure. They said the prop, which is uh, the, the propeller, as you know, going around. I said, well, you got a point, but I still want to do it, and they wouldn't let me do it. Um, so I went into my dressing room and I sulked for a while. <laughs> and want, well, want the plane want to, to do, chase me? Uh, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, finally, uh, they let me do part of it. Yep. An actor can sulk, you know. See, you'd know your show would be in trouble if they'd say, go ahead and do it. <laughs> you, that's where, that's you where you know, know you're... Just when you're going off the air, they come in and say, we want you to do that airplane stunt with that prop real close. <laughs> then you know it's bye-bye time. I know. The studio, the studio and the actor are in, uh, are in uh, uh, fights all the time because of that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but I think it has an air of excitement. I, the, the police all around our show right. are uh, excited by it. We, the policemen like us and like me because That's we good. give the policemen a, a good name. I, I've had many occasions to, to talk to policemen. I understand you've had some occasions yes. to talk yes. to them. Yes, yes, I have. It wasn't a long discussion. I did most of the listening. And, uh, but you know, they, they know, get along just fine. They know exactly what they're doing all the time. You know, with the helmets yes, on and the glasses yes. and, and, and the things they say, they know exactly what they're right. doing. I mean, they're taught this uh, lessons one and two on intimidation. Yeah. You know, wear <laughs> mirrored glasses and approach the car and, 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 and ask just where do you think you're going, you know, with a series of inflections. Mm -hmm. Just, just where do you think you're going, Sergeant? They have an image out uh, here, yeah. Aggressive. Can be intimidating. Just where do you think you're going? Have yeah. you ever been stopped? I was stopped by a policeman. Yeah? What yeah. were you doing? I, I, I was speeding. Ah. I was speeding, but I had a, I had a mission. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going where no man I had, had gone no. before. <laughs> I was... <laughs> the old mission ploy. <laughs> the old I have a mission ploy. But I was going home. Well, what kind of a mission is that? My wife had called me right. that a mouse that we had been stalking for two weeks and that had been robbing the, uh, not only the uh, pantry, but the traps that we yeah. had been uh, uh, You setting. mean to tell me that a highway patrolman stopped you and you got off by telling him I said, that you were officer, going home to kill a mouse? Officer, I said, I'm speeding to go kill my mouse, a mouse that my wife has panted about. I got my BB gun right here, and I'm going to hunt the mouse. And he said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Go. <laughs> but that's not all. Yeah. Two weeks later, I was skiing up at Mammoth on a bright lit night, moonlit night, huh. and I'm lying in a camper with my wife, and I hear... <laughs> and I knew by the sound of it, it was a rat. And I had to go and get the rat. And I thought I'd jack lantern the rat with a flashlight and a ski pole. And yes. I was stalking the rat. And I flipped open the cabinet, and there the rat was staring at me. The rat was huge. Right. And my wife said, open the door, let the rat out. So I opened the door, and meanwhile I had the ski pole, and I was whacking at the, at the rat. And finally the rat jumped at me, I dodged, and it ran outside into the parking lot, in one of the parking lots at Mammoth. And I ran after it. Why, why would you do that, Bill? Well, I don't wear anything when I sleep at night. <laughs> And I had this ski pole in my hand. And I had the bloodlust in my eyes. I wanted to kill this rat so badly. And I was after it, banging away at these depressions in the snow, 18 inches of new fallen snow. And you're nude. And I'm nude. Mm -hmm. And I hear a voice. Just where do you think you're going? I hope. I hope. <laughs> I said, officer, I'm, I'm chasing a rat. I hope it wasn't the same cop same who got cop. you on yeah, yeah, the same. Yeah. And that's I said, I'm funny. chasing a rat, so I clutched my sweat. He said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That's, a funny, that's a funny story. So your show is on Saturday night. 
T.J. Hooker, right? Yes. Going well. I know you're shooting tonight. I thank you for coming. I, I wish you great you luck asking. with it. I hope it's a big hit for you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And drive carefully. I right, sure. Oh, thank you, Bill. We'll be right back. Stay here you are.